This meeting is being held at Town Hall Monday evening, June 5th, 2017. This meeting is being broadcast live and will be replayed several times over the next week. I am Steve McDougall, the mayor of the town of Lexington. At this time, I would like to introduce to you my fellow council members. To my left is Mayor Pro Tem Hazel Livingston. Good evening. To her left is council member Todd Carnes. Good evening. To his left is council member Steve Baker. Good evening. To my right is council member Kathy Maness. Good evening. To her right is council member Ted Stambolitis. Good evening, y'all. And to his right is council member Ron Williams. Good evening. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce to you a young man that I met this summer um, doing a fundraiser for a, uh, a, a foundation called the Outdoor Dream Foundation. Uh, and he just kind of blew me away that night. And I wanted everybody to get to know him and meet him and, and kind of hear a small story for him. And I asked him actually to come say the invocation because he is the leader of the, uh, the, what is it at your school, Clay? Very good, thank you. So at this time, I'd like to introduce to you all, Mr. Clay Dixon, if Clay would come forward. If you'd like to uh, say a few words first, yeah, come to the microphone. Say a few words first, tell us a little bit about your story, because um, I think it's a really neat story, especially the elk hunt. Um, but uh, then we'll ask you to offer invocation for tonight's meeting. Um, how y'all doing? My name is uh, Clay Dixon. I'm, uh, I'm from Swansea, South Carolina. Uh, I personally have been, um, I've suffered with a terminal brain tumor since I was about six years old. Um, it is the hand I was dealt and I play it gladly. Um, I use what I went through as a tool, more, more or less to, uh, to offer God's will, God's word to everyone. Um, through what I through my activities with Outdoor Dream Foundation, Relay for Life, the Children's Hospital, multiple organizations, I've come in contact with various people of various walks of life, including Mayor Steve McDougall. Um, I was I, I'm extremely grateful or grateful and humbled to have been asked to come here this evening and offer the invocation. Um, when what he was regarding when he said the elk hunt uh, about. September of this of 2016, um, I went to Oregon, Astoria, Oregon, which is where the Goonies was shot, <laughs> to um to go harvest uh, Roosevelt elk. It was um quite the experience. It was about three or four days of trekking up and down mountains in Oregon, reaching peak altitudes of about 2,000 feet above sea level. Um, it was, it, it was riveting. I enjoyed every second of it. I am quite the outdoorsman, and it was such a challenge and such a blessing to observe God's beauty, not only in my own home, in my own town, in my own state, but to go witness it somewhere else. It was a blessing to say the least, but I'm gonna go ahead and stop rambling and go ahead and offer what I came here to do. I'm gonna go ahead and give y'all an invocation. So if y'all bow your heads and pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for bringing us here this afternoon, united under your name to enjoy the, the fruits of our labor. Really, it's, it's a blessing to be here, to be with so many distinguished individuals that will nurture our town and will do your will as you see fit. Father, I thank you for blessing us with local leaders and people who will lead us into a brighter future, a better tomorrow. I thank you for resting us in their hands and your hands alike, Father. Father, I thank you for the brave individuals who come here every so often to offer up what changes should be made and what needs to be acknowledged. It's quite the task, but I thank you for blessing us with people who are willing to manage that task. Father, I pray that you guide us, you strengthen us, and protect us to do your will on earth as you would have it in heaven above every day in, day out. I pray that you continue to bless me and nurture me to use my story to do your will and that your bidding shall be done. Father, I pray this in Jesus Christ's name. We all pray. Amen. 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 Very good. Clay, thank you so much.
I appreciate you coming. I'm sorry we kept you waiting. I know y'all have to leave. And thank you again so much for being with us. Thank y'all. Look forward to seeing you again soon. At this time, I would like to ask Council Member Ted Stambolidis if he would lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Ted. At this time, I will call the meeting to order. On tonight's agenda, are there any deletions on the agenda? Any items to be deleted on tonight's agenda? Hearing none, we'll move right into presentations. Our first presentation tonight is from Mr. Bill Shanahan with an update on the 2017 blowfish season and plans for the solar eclipse event this summer. Mr. Shanahan, well, welcome. Mr. Thank Mr. you. Mayor, it's great to be here. I want to just drop off a few things for you in regards to opening week last week. Thank you. We had uh, nearly 5,000 in attendance in the two games out of the ballpark. We sold out Saturday night. 2,375. Thank you. A lot of Lexington people love their blowfish baseball. So give you a little, a little update on uh, how we're doing out there. Now, don't ask me about the record, though, how the team is winning or losing, okay? Because that's not going as well. But, you know, the people aren't really coming out, whether we win or whether we lose. They're coming out as a family to have a good time and enjoy themselves. I, I appreciate the delay of the meeting today because right now, as you know, the weather is not good out there. We've got a game going on. And um, I, there was a rumor going on that the reason there was a delay in the council meeting was you were all out there helping pull the tarp. So I really <laughs> appreciate that. Just real quickly, I know a lot of you have not seen it yet. We did unveil the Total Eclipse centerline jerseys, which the Blowfish players wore opening night. We'll wear this jersey a number of times during the season at home and on the road in every city that we play in, in the Coastal Plain League, in Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and even Savannah, Georgia, they will get to see these jerseys and hear about that the total eclipse and the center line shoots right through the heart of Lexington and Lexington County. And the great thing about these jerseys are the players will wear them, and then the last Saturday night of the season, we will be auctioning these off to the fans to raise money for science programs in Lexington and raise that money for Lexington Elementary Schools. So we're excited about the season. Like I said, whether we win a game or we don't, we're here for our community. We're here for fun, entertainment, provide opportunities for people to come out and just have a good time. So I want to thank you all for your support, and I hope to see you all out at the ballpark this season. We've got lots more games going on. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Bill. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate you being here tonight. And again, sorry for the delay. Yeah, and when you guys get done, we're going to need to pull that tarp off. So tarp, pull it back. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Our next presentation tonight is a proclamation declaring June as Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness Month from Councilmember Ron Williams. Councilmember Williams. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I believe Taylor Wilson is the Director of Communications and Advocacy for the Alzheimer's Association, South Carolina chapters here as well. I'll read this proclamation and bring it down. Um, Come on. Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness Month is June for June of 2017. Whereas more than 5 million people in the United States are affected by Alzheimer's disease, a degenerative progressive disease that attacks the brain and results in impaired memory thinking and behavior, and whereas Alzheimer's disease is the most common form of dementing illness, making it the sixth leading cause of death in the United States and South Carolina, and whereas unless a cure or means of prevention is found for Alzheimer's disease, an estimated 16 million Americans will be affected by the year 2050, and whereas in one third of all American families, one parent will succumb to this disease, and whereas the increase in public awareness about Alzheimer's disease and the Alzheimer's Association may stimulate the interest and concern of the American people 
which may lead to increased research and eventually to the discovery of a cure for Alzheimer's disease. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the mayor and council of the town of Lexington that June 2017 is Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness Month in the town of Lexington, and all citizens are encouraged to support the research and services being conducted by voluntary organizations such as the Alzheimer's Association. Dated this fifth day of June 2017, Steve McDougall, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor and Council Members. We greatly appreciate this proclamation for June as Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness Month. Those statistics that are read out always sound very daunting, but when we break them down into South Carolina statistics, they can be even more disconcerting. There are 86,000 South Carolinians living with Alzheimer's right now, and there are 304,000 South Carolinians who are serving as caregivers. I am one of 304,000. My grandmother has dementia, she has Alzheimer's, and she has been placed in Lexington Extended Care after a year and a half of going to work every day and spending eight hours at work and then driving home and spending 12 to 14 hours taking care of her. You start doing that math, it was a continual day. And when caregivers are providing care, the hours that they spend are not just hours where you sit. They are hours where you prevent someone from wandering. They are hours where you remind someone that you are supposed to be there and that you're not a stranger in their house and you're not trying to steal their purse. It's moments where your heart breaks a thousand times because the one woman who has always loved you the most in this world can't remember you're named after her. Alzheimer's is a disease that is affecting millions of families and it's only going to grow and increase. By making this proclamation in the month of June, you have shown families in the town of Lexington who are facing this disease and other communities that you stand behind them while they face this and while we hope for a cure. So thank you so much for your compassion and your support. We are grateful to you for helping us raise awareness for June. Thank You're welcome. Thank you, thank you very much for being with us. Moving on, at this time I will have a vision plan update for June 2017. The Ice House Amphitheater is a huge success. The town of Lexington's Ice House Amphitheater was just named the 2017 Municipal Association of South Carolina Achievement Award winner. So we're very proud about that honor. We will go down to the uh, conference this summer and accept that award from MASC. We're very proud of that. Jennifer, thank you very much for putting that forward for us. Our Spring Lexington Live Concert Series was a huge success. We had, unfortunate, one rain out, uh, but I think that band is lined back up to come back and do uh, a, a, they enjoyed the facility so much they wanted to come back no matter what was going on, but um, they, were, they were as bummed out as we were that they didn't get to play that night. Future events for the Ice House Amphitheater are, are as follows. Movies in the Park, which feature presentation of La La Land on June 16th and The Princess Bride on June 23rd. That will be movies um, that will be played on stage at the Ice House Amphitheater. They will start at 8.30 p.m. Also, the 246th Army Band, Army Band celebrating our nation's birthday with a patriotic concert on Monday July 3rd, the band will take the stage at 9 p.m. and perform great patriotic music. There will be food and beverage for sale, and lawn chairs are welcome. And don't forget, because it's 4th of July, we will have fireworks at the end of their show. Looking forward to that. Uh, for more information on the Ice House Amphitheater and a full calendar of events, please visit www.icehouseamphitheater.com. Moving on to the update, our farmer's market, the town of Lexington farmer's market operates every Saturday from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. 
running through September 30th, except for the July 1st weekend. We will not have the farmer's market on July 1st. It is located at Lexington Square Park, and that address is 205 East Main Street. The town of Lexington Farmer's Market uses a community-friendly atmosphere to promote, support, and encourage local production while educating citizens on the benefits of eating local, fresh produce, and supporting local artists and the certified SC program. For more information, contact Walker Brewer, the downtown venue promoter, at 803-358-7275. Again, 358-7275 or visit our website at www.lexsc.com. Moving back to the Ice House Amphitheater, we have our first large venue event scheduled for June 30th, and it actually sold out in 35 hours. I'm excited to announce Edward McCain, live with Patrick Davis and his Midnight Choir and Finnegan and Bell is a sold out show for the June 30th event. We look forward to this concert and make sure you pay attention and sign up for the Ice House Amphitheater because if that one sold out that fast, I know the next one will too. That's all I have for a vision plan update at this time. We will move right into the traffic update from Mayor Pro Tem, Hazel Livingston. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A new right turn lane will begin construction at Lexington Square, the Fresh Market site this week. This work will be completed over the next several days with occasional lane closures between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. Anticipate delays and consider alternate routes during this time. Please use extra caution around this area and it will probably be a headache, so just go ahead and prepare for it. The construction portion of the Phase 1 Adaptive Traffic Signal Project is completed. The final four signals are expected to become fully adaptive in the next couple of weeks. As with the other signals they have come, that have come online, there's an adjustment period that will be ongoing. The next traffic committee meeting will be Wednesday, June the 28th at 8 a.m. on the third floor conference room of Town Hall. Finally, if you're aware of any traffic situation that needs to be reported, please call 359-1027 and let us know. Mayor Pro Tem, thank you very much. Mr. Mayor, I have a question about yes. that. Ms. Manus. And I don't know if it's Britt or Randy who needs to answer this, but we have requested that this road work or any road work in the town be done at night because we know we have a traffic nightmare and we don't want to add to it. So can you tell me why that's not going to be done during the night? Somebody? I, I believe that permit was issued before the request was made to the BOT maintenance office. Um, I'm not sure if there's, are there any other outstanding ones other than that one? None that I'm aware of. So we're not I've been on council for a long time and we've talked about doing road work at night forever. We have, that's when we do road work, but we've officially requested the maintenance office not allow lane closures on 378, 6 and 1 for anything um, during the day. And that happened recently. Okay. Thank you very much, Ms. Manus. At this time, we will move into public hearings. Public hearing speakers are limited to five minutes. Our first public hearing is final reading of an ordinance rezoning 124 Vera Road. Anyone here wish to speak to that? Moving on, our next public hearing, final reading of an ordinance entering into a mutual aid agreement with North Myrtle Beach and Johnston. Anyone here wish to speak to that? Hearing none, moving on, final reading of an ordinance to adopt the FY 2017-2018 budget. Anyone here wish to speak to that? Moving on, final reading of an ordinance to provide for the FY 2017-2018 tax levy. Anyone here wish to speak to that? Hearing none, that concludes our public hearing. We will move right into old business. Our first item of old business is from Council Member Kathy Manis. Final reading of an ordinance rezoning 124 Vera Road. Council Member Kathy Manis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. During the April meeting, Town Council re referred a court request to rezone 124 Vera Road back to the Planning Commission to consider rezoning this parcel from protected residential to general commercial. Properties in town near this one are zones general commercial. 
Properties across the street from this one are zoned industrial. The Planning Commission reconsidered the zoning of this parcel and recommended changing it to general commercial. I make a motion for final reading approval. Councilmember Manis makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Councilmember Williams seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. Our next item of old business is final reading of an ordinance entering into a mutual aid agreement with North Myrtle Beach and Johnston. Council Member Ted Stambolitis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of town council. The Lexington Police Department is entering in a mutual aid agreement with Johnston Police Department and the City of North Myrtle Beach Department of Public Safety. The proposed agreements are attached. I'd like to make a motion for final ring approval. Council Member Stambolitis makes a motion. Do I have a second? Seconded. Council Member Manny seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. It is unanimous. Our next item of old business is from Council Member Todd Carnes. Final reading of an ordinance to adopt the FY 2017 2018 budget. Council Member Carnes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. South Carolina law requires Town Council to adopt a balanced budget each year. Budget, revenue, and expenditures are attached as well as the draft ordinance. Mr. Mayor, I make a, a motion for final reading approval. Council Member Collins makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Council Member Baker seconds that motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your <clears throat> right hand. That is unanimous. Our next item of old business is from Council Member Ron Williams, final reading of an ordinance to provide for the FY 2017-2018 tax levy. Council Member Ron Williams. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. South Carolina law requires Town Council to adopt the tax levy each year. Attached is a draft ordinance for the tax levy for fiscal year 2017-2018. Make a final motion for final reading approval. Council Member Williams makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. second. Council Member Carnes seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. At this time, we will move into new business. Our first item of new business is from Council Member Steve Baker. First reading of an ordinance for sale of municipal property in Carolina Springs subdivision. Carolina, uh, Council Member Baker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. The town has been offered $500 for its interest in the pond and associated land in the Caroline Springs subdivision. Caroline Springs is not located in the town, but is on the north side of US 378 West between Wise Ferry Road and St. Peter's Church Road. The pond and land were donated to the town in 2010, but have served no purpose or use for the town and, and staff recommends selling the property. It is largely undevelopable undevelopable due to the presence of wetlands and a SCENG easement. The town will retain its rights to sewer easements and the pump station in the area. I make a motion for first reading approval of an ordinance to sell the property at Caroline Springs. Councilmember Baker makes a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Councilmember Maynard seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Oh. Mr. Williams. Mr. Poole, how do we acquire this? What was, why do we even acquire There used to be a practice of developers donating wetlands and things like that that surrounded neighborhoods to the town. Okay. Um, and at one point in time, it actually made sense because we were able to use those wetlands as mitigation credit when we had to, say, install a sewer line in an area that had wetlands. So we would preserve others, and, and the core would allow you to do that. They. Um, they quit that practice a number of years ago, and so it no longer makes sense to take on land that that you know you've got some liability for, but you get no benefit from. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Poole. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. Our next item of new business is from Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem Hazel Livingston. First reading of an ordinance granting a five-year municipal tax abatement to Project Platt. 
Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Town Council is being asked to consider authorizing property tax abatement for a new business moving into town. Authority for such an abatement is found in Section 3, Article 10 of the South Carolina Constitution, as well as 12-37-220 of the South Carolina Code. Subsection 39 of the statute indicates the governing body of municipality may by ordinance exempt from municipal ad valum taxes for not more than five years, property located in the municipality receiving the exemption from county ad valum taxes allowed pursuant to items 32 and 34 of the subsection. The exemptions referenced in 32 and 34 deal with qualifying incentives for corporate headquarters, manufacturing facilities, and job creation and other, and other, among other qualifiers. The county is considering a similar abatement which allows the town to file our suit. I make a motion for first reading of an ordinance granting a five-year municipal tax abatement to Project Platt. Mayor Pro Tem makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Council Member Stambolita seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. Our next item of new business is from Council Member Kathy Manis, first reading of an ordinance annexing of Lexington County tax map number 3500-03-160 located at 565 Corley Mill Road. Council Member Kathy Manis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. J JXP, excuse me, JZP LLC owns 1.6 acres located at 565 Corley Mill Road and has petition, petitioned to annex the property. A dentist office is located on the site. Properties in town near this one are zoned office commercial and protected residential. Corley Mill Road is classified as a collector road. The Planning Commission will review this annexation during their June meeting to make a recommendation on the zoning and road classification for this parcel. I make a motion for first reading approval. Council Member Manis makes a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Council Member Williams seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. Our next item of new business is from Council Member Ted Stambolitos. First reading of an ordinance annexing Lexington County tax map number 3300-04-012, located at 1118 Old Cherokee Road. Council Member Ted Stambolitos. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of town council. Lexington County School District 1 owns 37.8 acres located at 1118 Old Cherokee Road and has petitioned to annex the property. New Providence Elementary School is located on the site. Properties in town near this one are zoned limited commercial and Old Cherokee Road is classified as a collector road. The Planning Commission reviewed this annexation during their May meeting and recommended the same zoning and road cl classification for the property. Mr. Mayor and members of town council would like to make a motion for first reading approval. Council Member Stambolitis makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Council Member Baker seconds that motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. Our next item of new business is from Council Member Ted, St I'm sorry, you just read that one, moving on, is from Council Member Todd Carnes, first reading of an ordinance annexing a portion of Lexington County tax map number 3300-04-014 located at 1120 Old Cherokee Road. Council Member Carnes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Old Cherokee Investors LLC owns 20.03 acres located at 1120 Old Cherokee Road and has petitioned to annex a portion of the property. The property is one of several parcels associated with the Sterling Bridge subdivision that is currently under construction. Properties in town near this one are zoned limited commercial and protected residential. Old Cherokee Road is classified as a collector road. The Planning Commission reviewed this annexation during their May meeting and recommended protected residential two zoning for the property and collector road for Old Cherokee Road. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion for first reading approval. Council Member Collins makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Mayor Pro Tem seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. Our next item of new business is from Council Member Ron Williams. 
First reading of an ordinance annexing Lexington County Tax Map number 3300-04-033 and 106 located at 665 Old Chapin Road. Councilmember Ron Williams. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Sterling Bridge Development LLC owns 31.49 acres on two parcels located at 665 Old Chapin Road and has petitioned to annex the property. The parcels are associated with the Sterling Bridge subdivision that is currently under construction. Properties in town near these are zoned limited to commercial and protected residential. Old Chapin is classified as a collector road. The Planning Commission reviewed this annexation during their May meeting and recommended protected residential two zoning for the property and collector road classification for Old Chapin Road. Uh, I'd like to make a motion of first reading approval. Council Member Williams makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Council Member Stambouli to second the motion. Any further discussion? Mr. Mayor, may I? Yes, sir. Mr. Carnes. Just a question. This uh, Sterling, uh, Sterling Bridge subdivision, uh, did it go through? Where is it at in process as far as the subdivision? It's uh, vested with the county. Okay. So in that scenario, the... It, it went through the county, but the county held it to our standards? No, the, the, it was approved in the county under their standards. It wasn't until the Mount Horb annexation that there was any likelihood that we'd be able to reach the property. So that's something that developed recently. Mr. Mayor, I've got a question. Too. So we have no recourse in that? Was that discussed in uh, Planning Commission? They, yes, they, they talked about it. They were aware that it was vested. How do we uh, how do we guard against that? I don't think anybody wants to see uh, subdivisions coming into our town that are not held to our current standards. And well, um, you know, we've put forward some ways in the past with development agreements and things like that that can be done. Um, that's that's one way that you can help prevent that sort of thing from happening. Um, though I would say that Lexington County's modified a lot of their standards over the last three or four years and they, they are, minus the sidewalks, they are very similar to ours and in some cases even more strict, which is an exact flip-flop of the way it used to be. Um, so it's not, it's not terribly different than our standards. I thought, correct me if I'm wrong though, I, th I mean I thought our deal with them, our handshake agreement was that uh, that if it was uh, likely to be in the town that they would send here, yeah. does it does it have to be exactly adjacent for them to do that handshake it's, agreement it's, or we're within a parcel or two? Would there they? has to be some reasonable way to get there at the time. And when this was first brought forward, there we were nowhere near this area, nowhere near it at all. We were, um, the closest we were was Park Road. Um, so the, by the large parcel that Mount Hoare developed, and I don't know when they purchased it, but when all that developed and became contiguous with the town, that's what positioned us to be able to get close to the Sterling Bridge property. So am I, am I under the right impression we say this was vested in the county, that, that their approval process in the county for this particular subdivision was something that was done 12, 18, 24 months ago? I honestly don't know how long it was, just they were, when we approached them about annexation, they were already vested. I'm not sure at what point. I think it's in phases, so some of it was probably a while back and some of it more recent, I don't, but I don't really know the dates on it. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Collins, you finished? Yes, sir. Mr. Stambolitis. A uh, couple questions to uh, tag on to uh, Councilman Carnes' questions. At one time, we spoke about doing an overlay district with the county so that our rules and regulations and laws would mirror theirs or theirs would mirror ours so we wouldn't have this issue of, uh, of less ordinances that would enforce some of the recommendations we do council. Has that had any progress? Yeah, well, so, so um, w it's still ongoing, but, but there's been a lot of wins in the meantime. So they've done a lot to change like their sign ordinances in areas around the town to much more closely match ours. I'm not gonna say they're exactly the same, but they're, they're much more close to ours than they used to be. Um, so there's been some good things that have come of that, but we are still, we met as recently as about three weeks ago with um, 
planning staff at the county still trying to work out some of that as they go through their comprehensive plan process and they've got some new county council members who are who are eager to, to, to see if we can work that out so that's still ongoing but there have been some, some good things to come up well, and, and I think mr. Carnes I, I, I'm concerned there's no sidewalks for me I, I, I'm a safety first well, guy I, I think there are sidewalks there are sidewalks yeah, in this development one of the reasons they wanted to bring it in was because it's, it helps them a lot because the county doesn't take sidewalks anymore Okay. So by bringing it in, that would allow them to provide that amenity to their residents, which they couldn't otherwise. They could have done, but it would have been very difficult. They would have had to put the sidewalks on private property and out of the right of way, which is the county's current rules. And it makes it very difficult for a developer that wishes to put sidewalks in to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. And lastly, uh, it, are they close to our water and sewer? Do they benefit from the town of the water sewer uh, yes. when they get in it? They're, they're on our um, sewer. And okay. I believe they're joint water, okay. if I'm not mistaken. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Any further discussion? Just yes, one, one last on. question, Mr. Mayor. So <clears throat> if they have sidewalks, are there are there any great disparities between this subdivision and what we would have required uh, according to our ordinances? Um, I'll kind of ask John because he reviewed it, but I, I think it's pretty darn close once you have the sidewalks in. Yeah, that's usually the big catching point. Just it is. The, the, the one, and we may be able to work this out, the one major difference is with the county is um, they allow a little bit more flexibility in the side yard setback so that the developer can shift one way and, and average it out, I, I think is how they do it, whereas we have a hard and fast minimum five-foot side yard setback. So they, uh, so in this subdivision, they they could, they could have two, three foot side setbacks. They gotta have a minimum separation between the structures themselves, but they can average it out um, on the side. Yeah. So they could have two and a half to the property line on each one and get five feet between the structures, whereas we would say five feet from the property line and the next structure is built on the property line. So that's that's, that's the county not. the yeah. county standard is five feet between structures. No, it's Whatever that set separation is, I think six is the bare minimum. Bare minimum. Bare minimum. Yeah. So that's the primary difference, really, and on this particular subdivision is the flexibility that the county allows in the side yard setback that we don't. But there's not a. Uh, what about the uh, the driveways as far as the uh, the length of the drive from the roadway to the home? The standard setback on this is going to be 20 feet. So um, that would actually be more than is required on the PR2 zone. So. All right. Thank you. Yes, Ms. Maynard. Mr. Hanson. You need to get away this time. So if is this going to be built in sections this neighborhood or is it are they building it out this time it's in phases okay so will the phases that are coming in now that it's annexed have to go with the town standards or it could still go with the county standards? They, they've got they've got full approval for the entire subdivision from the county okay. under the counties so there is one parcel that we will still need to annex um, but they have it under contract, so they've already gotten approval for the subdivision. Okay. It's under construction. They're building it. Mm -hmm. It's either either bring it into town or not bring it into town, but it's it's under construction. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Hanson, if you would, uh, it may not be just me, but it may be some other members of council. Please express to this developer our heartburn with them not uh, meeting our standards and that we'll be looking mm -hmm. at it pretty close for second reading. How many homes are I overlooking it? Um, the, the design that they have now is 250 homes. Hmm. But that includes the parcel that you are not looking at now. Is this developer There's another one. The next one is another parcel. Anything else? I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. 
It's unanimous, reluctantly. Our next item of new business is from Councilmember Steve Baker. First reading of an ordinance amending the Commercial Corridor Special Overlay District to include Corley Mill Road. Councilmember Baker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. During the May Planning Commission meeting, the commission recommended amending the zoning ordinance to include Corley Mill Road in the town's Commercial Corridor Special Overlay District. Properties in this overlay are required to adhere to the town's architectural and appearance ordinance. I make a motion for first reading approval. Councilmember Baker makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Mayor Pro Tem seconds the motion. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. Moving on, our next item is from Mayor Pro Tem Hazel Livingston. First reading of an ordinance increasing building permit fees. Mayor Pro Tem. As part of the budget discussion, it was noted that the town only recoups 45% of the expenditures for the planning department through building permit fees. Industry rule of thumb is that this should be about 75%. <coughs> when town of Lexton building <coughs> permit fees are compared to other jurisdictions, they are approximately 75% of what <coughs> other municipalities charge. The fiscal year 2018 budget includes a 25% increase in building permit fees and a draft of the amended ordinance is attached. Um, Mr. Mayor, I make a motion for a first reading approval of an ordinance increasing the building permit fees 15% with a um, cost of living increase each year after that. Mayor Pro Tem makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Councilmember Williams seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. As she knows. Moving on, our next item of new business is from Council Member Kathy Manis. First reading of an ordinance accepting the title to Duffy Drive. Council Member Manis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. In 2015, the town of Lexington secured $130,000 in CDBG community development block grant funds. <laughs> To install, to install a sidewalk along Duffy Drive from Hendrick Street to Gibson Road. Because the proposed sidewalk crosses the road several times, the town has proposed to build several speed tables for traffic calming and pedestrian safety. Duffy Drive is currently maintained by Lexington County, which requires an encroachment permit to build the sidewalk and speed tables. After reviewing the permit request, the county will not accept the maintenance and liability of the sidewalk and speed tables constructed in the roadway. Therefore, staff is asking council to consider taking ownership of Duffy Drive, provided the county agrees to resurface the roadway within the next three to five years. Duffy Drive is a well-maintained road and has a low cost history. If the town takes over future maintenance responsibilities of this road, it is staff's opinion that the road has a low cost of ownership, accepting the title to Duffy Drive will require the passage of an ordinance. I make a motion for first reading of an ordinance accepting the title to Duffy Drive. Council Member Manis makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Council Member Baker seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. Our next item of new business is from Council Member Ted Stambolitis. Saluter River Coalition requests. Council Member Ted Stambolitis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of town council. The town of Lexington has become a member of a newly formed Saluter River Coalition. The coalition function will be a group effort to identify bacteria increases in the river basin to be able to give earlier warnings to the public about health issues. Currently, there is about a two-week delay in notification of contamination of the waters. The increased sampling by the coalition will reduce this to about a few days, giving the public more time to use the river without health risk from contaminated water. The coalition is requesting that each member pay a portion of the cost for increased bacteria sampling in the river. This will cost about $2,000 per member, and the COG will administer the funds for coalition. Mr. Mayor and members of town council, I'd like to make a motion for a council approval. Councilmember Stambolitis makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Councilmember Williams seconds the motion. Any further discussion? 
Mr. Mayor, I do have a comment. Yes, sir. Mr. Stambolidis. Uh, I think this is really a good idea on the members of the town council and mayor to, to take a more active role in protecting our rivers, especially in consideration for the recent uh, news reports that we've had with the contamination of the river. So I think that, that we're taking a proactive member, me, um, uh, measure and action to protect our rivers by sampling and, and, and testing the waters on a regular basis is for the greater good of not just the town of Lexington, but the whole Midlands community. So. I want to applaud our staff and our council, our mayor, for taking this proactive measure. Thank you, Mr. Stambolidis. Any further discussion? We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. Our next item of new business is from Council Member Todd Carnes, appointments to boards and commissions. Council Member Carnes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The terms for the following boards and commissions members will expire June 30th, 2017. Reappointments must be approved by council. Uh, the appointments would be for the advisory committee, Jeannie Kurtz, Gail Talon Brazel, and Robert Suggs. Board of Zoning Appeals, Kyle Clampett. Building Code Board of Appeals, James Snell. Historic Preservation Board, Amiel Manus and Tim Prevett. Planning Commission, Frank Berry and Sammy Hendricks. Traffic Committee, Susan Ruinen, Larry Yon, Mark Churchill, Bob Farrell, Rosemary Wilson, and Clyde Smith. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I make a motion that council approve these reappointments. Council Member Collins makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Mayor Pro Tem seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. It is unanimous. Our next item of new business is from Council Member Ron Williams, Shoal Creek Subdivision, Creek Bank Stabilization. Council Member Williams. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. On May 15th, Council was polled about the emergency repair of the Creek Bank Stabilization between Shoal Creek and Carrington Place Subdivisions. The Creek Banks had eroded and the town sewer crossing was in jeopardy of collapsing into the 12 Mile Creek. The Utilities Department received quotes for the stabilization of the Creek Banks Metro Construction was a low bid at $32,800. Lad Corporation was next at $35,560. And the high bidder was Lake Murray Utilities at $42,000. The work has been completed and council needs to ratify the poll vote. So I'd just like to make a motion to approve this work. Council Member Williams makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Council Member Stambolita seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. At this time, we will hear announcements from Council Member Steve Baker. On behalf of the mayor, council, and employees, we would like to extend our deepest sympathies to Council Member Carnes for the loss of his father last week. Secondly, Movies in the Park continues on Fridays at 8.30 p.m. On June 9th, we have Star Wars Rogue One at the Gibson Road Soccer Complex. On June 16th, we have La La Land at the Ice House Amphitheater. And on June 23rd, we have The Princess Bride at the Ice House Amphitheater. Thirdly, don't forget to visit the town's farmer's market every Saturday from 9 to 12 at Lexington Square. Murders and Mysteries Walking Tour of Downtown Lexington will be on Saturday, June 10th at 8 p.m. The event is free and it will begin at the vacant lot on the 100 block of East Main Street. Due to the mature subject matter, attendees should be 18 years old or older. The Planning Commission will meet on June 21st at 8 a.m. here in Council Chambers. The fourth annual Family Day is Saturday, June 24th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Lexington County Museum Complex, located at 231 Fox Street. The event is free, providing family members of all ages to learn about the history of Lexington County through hands-on <laughs> programs. A blacksmith will be in attendance to teach guests about metalworking in the 19th century. Hot dogs and chips will be served. The Traffic Committee will meet on June 28th at 8 a.m. in the third floor conference room. Town Hall will be closed on July 4th in observance of Independence Day. And finally, 
Council will meet again on July 10th at 6 p.m. for a merged summer meeting for the council work session and the regular council meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Baker. At this time, are there any questions from the news media? I don't believe we have any tonight. Are there any public comments? Anyone in the public? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Ms. Fleming, please come forward. I'm Constance Fleming. I live at 604 Hendrick Street. My first thing, I would like to um, publicly apologize to Councilman Baker for leaving him out in a previous session. Please accept my apologies. Charge it to my head, not my heart. Um, I have one question about the general commercial um, for rezoning of 124 Vera Road. Um, how would that affect the homeowners in that area? And I'm asking that question because I know I'm going to get that call. <laughs> the homeowner came, I know, to a previous meeting and yes, they tried to. We did. Uh, Changed the zoning of that property to industrial. Okay. And we did not allow for that. Okay. Because of the homeowners in that area. All right. But we would allow commercial because the land around it is all commercial. Okay. So it, then the general commercial, of course, is better than the industrial. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. That's that's all I need to know. Okay. I believe the adjacent property owner came and was and was good with that. Okay. I believe they were at the meeting, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. They did not want it yeah. industrial, but right. they approved general commercial. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from public tonight have any comments? Hearing none, that concludes our business for this evening. Thank you for watching the Town of Council meeting for the Town of Lexington. This meeting was held at Town Hall on Monday evening, June 5th, 2017. A recording of this meeting will be aired on the Town's Information Cable Channel 2 several times during this week. Do I hear a motion to adjourn our meeting? So moved. Mr. Carnes makes a motion. Do I have a second? Mayor Pro Tem seconds motion. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. We are adjourned.